Hello, folks. Welcome to the next episode of Differential Equations. I'm your host, Rifat Bari, Harvard Exoplanet Researcher, perfect ACT scorer, and I have a perfect GPA here at the City College of New York where I'm studying physics. So over the last few episodes, we have been struggling to calculate the surface area of the simplest possible surface, which is a sphere. So now you know just how tough it is to find the surface area of a general function. But let's see if we can finish the job today, kill the beast, and we can finally evaluate the double integral of the cross product of the two partial derivatives of our parameterized function of the sphere. So uh, we're going to use our results from the last few episodes. So if you have not checked them out, make sure you do. And so let's start off with the cross product we calculated from, from the previous lecture. So it looks like we have some empty space here, so I'm going to take advantage of that. So our integral, our double integral, is going to be the, the magnitude of our cross product, so uh, r sub phi cross r sub theta, okay, uh, over our area for which the domain is defined. So uh, let's find this thing's magnitude. So what is this, uh, this thing's magnitude going to be? Uh, let's go ahead and calculate it. I'm going to have the square root. I'm not going to put the integrals yet. I'll, I'll put it later. Actually, maybe I should put the integral now so you understand what I'm doing. All I'm doing is I'm calculating the magnitude of the cross product I calculated in the previous episode. So I'm going to have the square root of rho squared sines. Let, let's do it uh, without wasting too much space. Rho, I'm squaring my x component. So that's going to turn into rho to the fourth power, sine to the fourth power, right? Yeah, phi, cosine squared theta, theta, plus rho to the fourth power, once again, okay? Uh, sine to the fourth power of phi, so sine to the fourth power of phi. Now don't get too excited because maybe these are fake. Maybe this is fake, a uh, fake pattern. Uh, but maybe it's not. Uh, sine theta, that just becomes sine squared theta. And we have one more component. As you can see, I am making my radical uh, bigger to accommodate my third component, which is the z component. So plus uh, this component squared, which is going to give me rho to the fourth power, rho to the fourth power, uh, sine squared phi, cosine squared phi. Okay, good. Good, and so now we're just going to calculate the derivative, uh, the, the integral. So uh, what do you notice here in my radicand? So I have a common factor of rho sine to the fourth of phi, right? So let's go ahead and factor that out. If I factor that out, what am I going to have? So let's, let me put this. Okay, so I'm going to end up, I'm going to end up with, in the parentheses, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And we love it whenever we see that because this just becomes 1. And so what are we going to have? We're going to have the double integral of um, the square root of rho to the fourth power times sine of 4 phi uh, times 1 because we factored out the, the, the sine squared theta and the cosine squared theta plus rho uh, Rho, rho to the fourth sine squared phi uh, times cosine squared phi uh, times dA. So let me move over here. So times dA. Okay. So now, if you look, uh, if you look at this, this looks like a lost cause. How in the world are you going to integrate this? But fear not, this problem has been manufactured so that you can solve it precisely. So look at this and look at what you can factor out. You can not only factor out this rho to the fourth, but also a sine squared phi. So, so if I do that, if I if I factor out a rho to the fourth a sine squared phi, then what do I have on the inside? Well, on the inside I have sine squared phi over here, as per as per this one, and I have cosine squared phi. Wow, wow! Look at that. It is it's like uh, the math has conspired in just the right way so that this becomes a 1, right? So what am I, what am I left with inside the square root? A joke, 
the square root of rho, rho to the fourth power times sine squared phi. And what is that? That's nothing more than rho squared sine phi. That's it. And dA, what is dA going to be? It's going to be d phi d theta. Now, uh, we can just solve this as normal. So first of all, maybe I should I should head over here and I should write down what our integral is so we can finish this problem once and for all. Okay? So we have we have the following. We have the double integral of rho squared sine phi dA. Okay, so now your integrand is some, something that looks very simple. So now the question is, what are your limits of integration going to be? So let's try out something. Okay, so my dA is going to be d phi, d phi, d theta. Okay, and I'm going to say my, uh, my phi goes from 0 to pi, and my theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so let's see how this is going to work out. We, we know that our final answer, our final answer is going to be 4 rho squared, 4 pi a squared. So you can already see that we have that factor of a squared here. Here a is just rho, but it's the same thing. If we pull this out, you should see that more clearly. I have rho squared uh, times the double integral of sine phi dA, right? And so we expect this double integral here to give us no more no more than 4 pi, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, uh, my theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And this sign of phi has nothing to do with theta, nothing. So we're going to pull it out as if it were a constant. So sine of phi has nothing to do with theta, so we pull it out. And so here theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, uh, d theta. And here we have d phi going from our limits of integration. Uh, times rho squared. So this inside, what is this? Well, uh, the integral of 1 d theta from 0 to 2 pi, well, that's just 2 pi, right? And so I'll have sine of phi, uh, the integral of sine of phi times 2 pi d phi uh, times rho squared. I'm going to pull out the 2 pi, uh, and we're going to find the final integral, okay? And so we, we know what our final answer is, but we expect it to come out of this. So rho squared, uh, pull out the 2 pi to the front. So I'll have actually 2 pi rho squared times the integral of sine of phi d phi. So this sine of phi, uh, sine of phi d phi should give us 2 if we do it correctly. So let's go ahead and do it. So, sine of phi, the integral of that should be minus cosine of phi, okay, from 0 to pi. What is that going to give us? Well, cosine of pi, cosine of pi is minus 1, and cosine of 0 is uh, 1. So, I'm going to have inside here cosine of pi minus cosine of 0. This is negative 1, this is positive 1, but this negative makes it negative 1, okay? And don't forget your 2 pi rho squared on the outside. So times 2 pi rho squared. 2 pi rho squared, 2 pi rho squared. Okay, so minus 1 minus 1, that's minus 2. Times minus is 2, positive 2. Times 2 gives us 4. For a final answer of 4 pi rho squared. And that is how you find the surface area of a sphere. So folks, as you can see, the answer is as expected, and uh, that's it. It was a very simple problem, and you should be able to do it in your head. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll check you out in the next one.